Hey, thanks, Charlie, for coming to get today with me. Um, today we have our 19th episode of how to uh, of the road to CTA. This time it's on how to read requirements. Uh, Charlie is really, really deep into his journey to CTO right now, and I think there's nobody better to tell us about the topic of requirements and how to read them properly. How many years of experience in the Salesforce as an architect do you have by now, Charlie? Uh, I have been in Salesforce for uh, about seven years, and uh, I, I came in as, a, as, a, as an architect, um, but uh, uh, then uh, from architect, I worked on development and I work on configurations. So um, I learned it the other way, but uh, uh, seven years. I so, And we both know it from the Trinity CTA. The technical solution is meaningless unless it meets the, require, meets the requirements. This is a quote I got from you, and maybe you learned it the hard way. Can I say that this yes. way? Yes, being a hardcore technical guy, uh, this is the hard way. Unless my solu technical solutions are solving concrete requirements, then I'm not doing anything uh, for my business or for a CTA scenario. You do something. You're having fun. I like being having fun, and sometimes I have amazing solutions. But so far, um, this means nothing for business. I can do that on the weekend. So, as always, disclaimer: um, it's our personal opinion. We are not CTA charges. We are not affiliated with Salesforce. It's just our opinion. You know, take whatever you want. Make sure that you qualify our whatever we say with other people. And as most of you know, I support Refugee Force, and Charlie agreed that we um, support them together today. They just started their new training in Berlin and they are doing it in the Netherlands. If you need highly skilled employees, make sure to check out refugeeforce.com. Jasper can help you out. They are highly motivated, highly skilled. Nothing better to have on your team, especially if you want to increase your diversity than somebody who is freshly trained from um, refugeeforce.com. And with that, we go right into the what. I want to start at the top, and we had this discussion before, already, Charlie. What there's two things business wants to do: make more money, spend less money. That's it. <laughs> there's, there's nothing else. Everything is uh, secondary. We have to understand the business deeply, even as technical people. This is my personal philosophy. We have to understand what's unique about the business, but also what's common. I mean, 99% of a business is the same across different businesses in the same industry. So a sales business is primarily a sales business, but there must be some unique works in it. And the most important thing, and this is why we are hired as Salesforce people, we have to make them more money. And you spend a lot of time in practicing journey mapping, Charlie. Can you maybe walk me through? Uh, journey mapping, uh, mapping. Uh, I start with, uh, uh, with the, the customer because customer is at the center uh, of the business and how do they become a, a customer? Then once they become a customer, who serves them? Is it only our company's people who serve them or they are um, other uh, partners who serve them? So uh, focus on people and then where do they do their, uh, uh, do, where they do their work? And that's, those are the systems. And then uh, what data do they need, need to use at every step? So that's the way how I do a journey map. This is a really great way of doing it. Once you have this high level journey map, um, I, I'm a huge fan of creating small manageable chunks. I'm not the smartest guy in the room usually. Um, I can't do complex requirements. So I create really small manageable chunks of requirements. Oftentimes I even split up one sentence into two or three sentences from a requirement to make it small and manageable. And the next one you brought up, Charlie, about the filtering. A uh, filter for important information. Uh, all the nouns and the numbers are important. Uh, so the nouns, they are usually the business terms. I find it to be extremely important to respect the terms that that industry uh, uses. And uh, I uh, like what Johan taught me, have a soft eye. And this money I'm thinking about uh, that, uh, um, uh, that phrase, what does it mean? You know, respect what they have figured out uh, how to say uh, this, this things in their work, the nuns. I, I learned something a long time ago from one of my bosses that uh, I, when I get a new client, I actually start a, a small uh, translation workbook. So because in our sales world, it's called opportunity, but maybe in the non-for-profit space, it's called 
uh, donation in the non-for-profit space. I just recently started to work there. It's not called money. It's called influence. It means money, but they call it influence and you're never supposed to say uh, money. Um, we call it often customers. Sometimes it's called clients. Respect the words and use the words of the customers. This gives you already great insight into the next. And the last on the details is rather delete later to, than to forget to collect. I think you learned that with your PowerPoints. How do you go about that? Well, I, uh, I, use, uh, I used one page uh, as a draft to write the business terms and the numbers together and to try to connect them. Um, I remember one scenario, uh, they, they tell us how many primary contacts they have. And then, uh, but at that time I failed to associate primary contact represent the company. So because they have this many primary contacts, then they also, we also have that many uh, customers. So all these numbers, uh, we need to make sense of them and connect them to the business. So, so those are the important details. So you, almost, you have like one slide where you basically collect almost all nouns. Yeah. This is a good one and together with numbers. And this is, I think one of the big keys what we architects are for, we have to collect all the numbers. And yes. do a lot of, we are engineers after all. What do engineers do? We do math, very basic yes. math, but. Yeah. The, at the, last, the next one is, I learned that from you and maybe I try to repeat it in order to make sure boundaries and transitions. Uh, we are often pretty good in solving within. So first we have to identify the boundaries. Um, our projects often span multiple boundaries. One boundary is marketing, maybe one boundary is um, sales, one boundary is service, one boundary is fulfillment. I mean, you can cut it wherever where you want, but this is the standard ones. And I learned from you, Charlie, that the problems usually occur in the transitions between the boundaries. This is where you have to be as careful as possible to make sure that the, the system doesn't break. So how does an opportunity become an order because this is a transition. Yes. Can you maybe tell us something from your um, work experience of these boundaries? Oh, well, instead of working experience, uh, I remember a great question asked by Lilies uh, in a mock. So we, I, I think if you do not mind, we can use that. So now after sales, you have sold customer something. And then later you need to serve that. How does asset get created? And I think that's a transition problem um, from sales to service, and we need to figure that out. This is a good point. Yes, people like to skip these details, and it's an important detail because the asset almost works as a, how's it called? Uh, I, I don't uh, as a as a transitioning object between the two different boundaries. Good point. Sometimes yeah, it's good. I never thought about it, but we have transition object, the asset. Uh, the account of the contact might be one, maybe the order might be one, where different boundaries overlap. This gives extra complexity if we handle something like the asset option. The last one is my personal pet beef. Um, I see that mostly with technical people that they sometimes skip sentences when solutioning. I also see that not only in the CTA scenario, but also when doing demos or presentations, that we skip requirements. Um, especially if they are kind of, let's say, boring requirements. If the answer is, yes, we create a page layout with um, five fields on it and have a pick list, you know, something which is simple, you can't solve it because from a customer point of view, um, every requirement, every sentence has the same value. You have to solve everything. You can't skip something. So make it easy on yourself. Take a line, solve it. If it's solved, do a check mark. If it's not solved, don't actually solve every single line. Don't skip anything. What do you, uh, Charlie, how do you do that in your world, in your uh, working experience or CTA preparation? Uh, okay, uh, so what is simple for us may not be simple for everyone. If we have an entry-level uh, configurator, uh, a developer, we may need to tell them the basic things. Now, for CTA, uh, if they have a simple requirement, um, uh, we, we earn a point on that. It's as good as earning a point on a very complex problem. Uh, but uh, many technical problems, um, uh, they, they, they think this is so simple. I do not need to, make, to mention that this should be a field on contact. So we, we, should, we should do that. Uh, another thing is that uh, uh, us technical uh, uh, people often face very tricky situations. So we think we read this sentence. Now I cannot solve it now. Uh, I, better to, I, I better continue and I think there might be tricks uh, here. So uh, I, I got advice. 
that read the sentence uh, on, on their surface value have a soft eye and uh, just solve it solve it as as the problem is stated don't think too much and uh, and find all the potential troubles and solve that that will waste too much time and uh, may may not may not give us the best solution for the stated requirements this is a good point. I think this is something we learned from the Salesforce certification in the web assessor where you can say mark for later. So I personally go the following. I answer with the current knowledge and I mark it for later. So I can, at least I have some answer. Don't skip it immediately. Um, this is a good point. Like um, Soft eye. I like that. Good. Soft. Next. So you understand now the value. What can you do next? And Charlie, if you have to been doing this now extensively, <laughs> you, have, you are the king of mocks, I would say. <laughs> well, thanks. I, I think someone else did more than me. <laughs> I think there's nobody who did ever more than Vinay. He must have done every single mock. Like 10 <laughs> yes. <times>. So. <laughs> so, practice, practice, practice. There's nothing you put, you have to put in the grind. Uh, I talked with a friend who is a therapist again, and she confirmed understanding a problem is maybe a third or a quarter of the solution. Three quarter of the solution are practicing. You mean you don't see a somebody who wins the Olympics and say, oh, I understood how, I don't know, jumping works. No, they practice every single day. And I think we have to do the same. And I think this is something we also have to do the same once we are CTAs and once we are architects. I mean, we still should go back into the trailhead and sometimes, you know, spin up an org and create a flow. I just do the same with flows. I start from, from scratch again. You know, it's, it's a, even a while since I created flows, so much change, practice, practice, practice. And Charlie, pre-sales. Have you been doing pre-sales? Uh, well, I do. I, I am a solution engineer, so I do a little bit of uh, uh, pre-sales. What do you get out of pre-sales? Um, requirements are not always uh, spelled out uh, clearly because if, if you think about our clients, they speak their business terms. They they not they are not saying they are not saying you know I have a Salesforce solution in mind. Let me come up with the best requirement. No, they tell us what they want they want to do, and then they, we have to create a solution for them. So some of the CT scenarios are written in a fuzzy way. Uh, I think that's that's realistic. This is a good point. Um, the next one is help as many people as possible to solve problems. I found this always very very helpful because it puts you outside of your comfort zone. Um, we all know sales, so LinkedIn, um, Salesforce community, great way to, to learn to read fuzzy requirements and to solve them. Yes. Um, and Charlie, with the next one, we practice together, always ask and think about the business. Did you think about the restaurant? We talked about it, how a restaurant operates. Uh, how a restaurant uh, operate? I recently did not go to a restaurant. Uh, uh, okay, uh, restaurant, uh, the, uh, there are many individual restaurants, then there are many chains. So that, um, um, so uh, I, I did not think about the overall, uh, uh, how, how the restaurant work, but, but I did think uh, when you mentioned restaurant, I immediately uh, remember, uh, I immediately know that we may need to model one business, but with many different restaurants as locations. Uh, and uh, um, also uh, when customers uh, orders, uh, order uh, order uh, dishes, uh, we can give them a mobile, mobile app. So these are the things that immediately come to my mind. Uh, actually, I did not think uh, about ah. the owner. Maybe it's, it's um, I, I, had a, uh, I was in a restaurant last week with a friend of mine who's a product manager and we noticed both that we are just so obsessed with business that we both couldn't stop to, under, to analyze the restaurant and how this particular restaurant works, how the order flow is, how the cash flow is, what's the advantage of cash, what's the disadvantage of cash, um, um, how the logistics work with, with uh, takeout ordering. It's um, try to make it a habit and analyze businesses around you. The next one is the same, join business meetings. Uh, this is might be a little bit weird, but go up to man your manager and ask them, can I just join as a silent observer? Join as many business meetings as possible, even if it's on your free time as chi uh, silent observers. And <laughs> Charlie, how do you turn off your technical thinking? How do I turn off? I, I got a training. I got a, spe a specific training. One training, uh, one technique is that move off solution and lesson to the clients, what's important for them. 
and uh, and uh, ask them when they are done. Ask uh, is it, is there anything more? And then they give they give you a list. And then given this list, and uh, you 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 ask them among this list, what are the most important? What are the top three most important things? How they impact you? And then only after we have thoroughly understand our client, we come back and come up with a solution for them. And even if they ask for a solution. We do not even uh, immediately tell them, and we will we will we will basically deflect that. We will say now uh, uh, we we would have a recommendation on this, but let's see what's important. What's important for you? Why is why why this this is disturbing you? So uh, that way we get the pain, we get uh, we we get the value we can create. This. I will practice the same as you do. I, I will have to make sure that I don't jump immediately to solutions. I, this is a good point. The last one is practice in real life. Um, when you get a ticket and you're a developer, think about the business. When you, when you, whatever you do, think about the business. Make sure you read the requirements in details. Make sure you understand it. Maybe do always business entity mapping, journey mapping. Do a journey mapping of the company you're currently working in. Understand that one. Um, there's unlimited amounts of business uh, practices in life. It's just another thing it takes practice. If you want to reach out to an expert in that, I would say Melissa is currently the expert in the field or Jolly. I mean, I, Melissa is the expert in everything. <laughs> <laughs> Very experienced. Um, and she recently put in a lot of time into journey mapping, requirements, reading, this kind of thing. This concludes our today's session. Thanks a lot, Charlie, for joining me. It was a lot of fun. I hope you all got something out of it and see you next week. Bye. Thank you, Jim. Bye-bye.